we're going to talk about how you can organize your tasks, such as things that you have to do with students, get a certain paper back, contact them about an extension, things like that, using a system called Getting Things Done and a software platform called Evernote. Now, Evernote is a web-based note-taking system. Because it's web-based or cloud-based, once you have an account, you can reach it from anywhere in the world with internet access. So again, you can reach it from a hotel, when you're traveling, whatever. At the same time, there is a client that you can download onto your desktop, and you can work on that client, and it will automatically sync up with the web. So you can actually be working on the client on one computer, and the results will show up on another computer right next to it. Now, the getting things done is simply a methodology for organizing the things that you do. The idea is that most people waste a lot of time because they don't put enough time into getting themselves organized. This means not only listing their tasks, but listing their priority and some other things that we'll talk about. And the time you put into organizing your tasks will get more than made up in the time savings that you'll have from not repeating things and not trying to find things and not missing deadlines and things like that. So we're going to show you how to use the getting things done methodology, which can apply to all your tasks, and specifically how this may work with student tasks as well. Now here's a screenshot of Evernote. And Evernote first divides into different notebooks. You'll notice that on the left-hand side, I have one called Getting Things Done, another one that's simply in my name, and a few other things. The first thing you'll do is you'll create a notebook, and you could call it Getting Things Done or something else. I'm just going to left-click. I'm just going to say New Notebook, and I'll give it a name. I'll call it Getting Things Done. Note, it's a synchronized notebook, meaning it's going to sync with the cloud. So I'll be able to reach it from any computer in the world. First off, you make a new note just by coming up here, clicking New Note, and you'll see it shows up on the left-hand side in your list of notes, as well as on the right-hand side. So you may double-click it, and this will open it up in its own window. You'll give it a title. I'm just going to say New Note, and then you'll just start typing information. Information 1, Information now this works a lot like Google Drive documents where there is no save button it's saved the instant you have hit the keystroke so if I close a note right now it'll be there I'll just click close and there it is and it's going to sync up with my account which means it'll show up on any computer that I'm using Evernote now you can see there's a lot of notes here as well here's a note on things to do in my course CFE 6000 I also have a note on feedback study and so on and so forth now the real power of Evernote is in its tagging system. Now this is important. Most people organize their files with folders. And this is actually a poor way of organizing information. Folders are a holdover from our own paper file system. In fact, folders look like paper files. And the problem is that any file can be logically placed in a number of different folders if you have a big folder directory structure. For instance, is the student work in a folder work and then students or is it in a folder classroom and then something else so very often the same file can be logically placed in a number of different folders and you have to chase down a number of rabbit holes to find the right file tagging changed everything tagging was more or less invented by google and the idea is that you have a piece of information and you give it as many tags as you think you might use to find it then when you click the tag all of the pieces of information with that tag show up so by tagging say a piece of students work with student work something else something else any one of those tags will get you to it and tagging simply has revolutionized the way we organize information. Google could not operate on if it had not had a tagging system. And you see on the left hand side are the tags. So for instance, I could click the work tag and all of the notes with work as a tag will show up. I can also click high, which means high priority, or low, which means low priority. I can also click immediate, which things I have to get done immediately, long term. And here's a tag called voice, which just refers to a voice feedback study I'm coordinating. Now note, the tags are organized in categories, and that's for a reason. You notice that 
Those tags with a full colon in front of them, one full colon, are immediate and long term. That's the temporal tag. I indicate whether the task is due immediately or in the long term. Now, of course, I could have immediate, medium term, long term, as many as I want. The second level of information is importance. Here we have high importance, low importance, and medium importance. That's distinguished by two full colons. All the tags in that category have two full colons. Third is a tag according to the purpose. And you see I have consulting, Magna, a company I do some work with, personal, rental, and work. And you may, for instance, here have a category for classes. You may even create a tag for particular classes. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to double click my new note and I'm now going to add tags to it. I'll come up, I'll click the tag category, and I'll first do one colon. And you'll see all the tags show up. Now I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to decide if this is an immediate task or long term. I'll just say it's immediate. And there it's been tagged. Now I'll click to add tag again. And this time I'll type two colons. Now you'll see I can choose between high, medium, and low importance. Let's imagine I decide as medium importance. Third, I'm going to add the last tag according to topic. So I'll hit three colons. And you see now the various topics show up. So let's imagine it's work. So now I've given it these three tags. Now all I have to do is close because it's already been saved. And now I can come up here and decide I'm going to search by tags if I'd like. I can go long term and all the long term tags show up. I can instead go short term or immediate and all the short term tags show up including notice the one I just made. I can also do the same on the left here. I can click high to indicate the high importance events and so on and so forth. So in the morning I can just look and I could start by saying I'm going to look at the high importance things I have to do or I'm going to look at the more immediate things I have to do. And in your case as instructor you may click say a course. Now a way I organize tasks within a course is to put them all into one note. So for instance, all my CFE 6000 events are all in one note. I have these headings here because once a week I go through and I scan mentors who have finished different aspects and I put their name down. That indicates they have to do something. I won't explain that, but I know what each of these means. So using the spreadsheet that I showed you in the former video, I'll find the names of mentors which have something that has to be done. I'll put the name down and I'll have all that information here. Then when I have time, I'll go and actually do those things. So for instance, with John Smith, I have to indicate to the schools that he has finished 6,000 as well as indicate someone else. Once I've done that, I'll just delete his name out. I also have issues I have to handle with various faculty and so on and so forth. So I just use a single note for a single course. And you can do the same thing. You can put all the tasks that you have to do for a single course into a note. Or maybe you'll make the course itself a category and make a note for each different task. It's up to you. Another thing Evernote can do is organize your information. For instance, here we have an article on using audio feedback to help students improve their work. And this PDF is actually embedded within the note itself. There's a simple attachment feature that allows you to do that. This is nice because when I find research, I can put it into different categories according to its topic. In this case, the research is related to voice feedback study. So notice that I have a tag here that says voice. When I find a new article related to that study, I put the article into a note. I say put a few notes on top of it to give me information about the article, a kind of very short bibliography. Again, when I close this, I can go to voice and all of the articles I have in voice feedback are right there and I can pull them up. It takes a little practice to get used to creating notes but once you do you'll find you can create them very very quickly and again tagging is critical. Once you start tagging information you can find it far far faster than the old archaic folder system or simply writing them down on sheets of paper. So give it a try.